Beijing man spends 530,000 yuan on gold bars and money laundering plot. China National Gold Group to compensate customers. CCP officialdom shocked, corrupt official revealed as foreigner. Chongqing orders wedding banquets to be pre-reported, criticized as a step back to the Cultural Revolution. Radioactive leak found on China-Russia border, CCP accused of deleting posts to hide it. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Beijing man spends 530,000 yuan on gold bars and money laundering plot. As China's economy declines and people lose confidence in the future, there has been a rush to buy gold as a safe haven. Amidst this, scamming gangs across various regions in China have taken the opportunity to launder money through gold purchases. On April 10, the topic man spends 530,000 yuan, approximately 73,000 US dollars, to buy out gold bars from two stores, shop assistants call police topped Baidu's hot search. According to the Fengtai police in Beijing, at around 12 p.m. on February 24, a man entered a gold shop in Fengtai and used his card to buy 600 grams of investment gold bars for 240,000 yuan, about 33,000 U.S. dollars. An hour later, he appeared at another gold shop in Fengtai, where he purchased investment gold bars worth 290,000 yuan, around 40,000 U.S. dollars. It turns out that this man was not wealthy but was transferring money for a scamming gang by purchasing investment gold bars, thereby moving funds involved in a telecommunication fraud case. Due to their ease of concealment, many scamming gangs use gold bars as a method to launder and transfer fraudulently obtained funds. People chosen by these gangs, carrying bank cards with the stolen money and a mobile phone, go to gold shops to wildly spend by swiping their cards then hand over the purchased gold to their superiors in exchange for a commission. On April 10, the Beijing Daily reported that since the beginning of the year, there have been multiple cases across the country where people were buying large amounts of gold to transfer money for scamming gangs. Recently, a man claiming to be a buyer for a company entered a gold shop in Wenzhou, Zhujiang, to buy 1 million yuan, approximately 140,000 US dollars, worth of gold. He spent nearly an hour in the shop, during which he used a bank card from another region to make multiple transactions totaling 1.15 million yuan, around 160,000 US dollars. It was later found that the card was linked to a fraud case involving a victim from Shandong. In a related case, a scamming gang in Yenin, Shanxi, used gold purchases to launder over 50 million yuan, about 7 million US dollars leading to the arrest of 22 suspects on April 8. As China faces economic uncertainty, the rising demand for gold, seen as a safe haven, has been exploited by criminal gangs for money laundering tied to various scams. Using gold purchases to legitimize illicit funds, these gangs have woven a network of deceit across the market. This misuse of the gold market not only victimizes individuals financially but also destabilizes community trust. With China's gold demand up 28% post-pandemic, there's an urgent need for stricter transaction oversight to prevent such exploitation and preserve the market's integrity. China National Gold Group to Compensate Customers In an effort to address the significant financial losses for consumers and widespread public frustration, the state-owned China National Gold Group announced last week that it would make advance payments to customers affected by the closure of its Beijing store. In detail, on April 1, China National Gold Group Gold Jewelry, China Gold, a subsidiary of China National Gold Group Corporation, disclosed that its franchisee in Beijing, Sanding Yuan Gold and Jewelry Company Limited, had breached its franchise agreement. The Beijing RNF Plaza store, managed by Sanding Yuan, was involved in illegal gold custody activities and ceased operations on December 27, 2023 due to its inability to return the gold to customers. The head of Sanding Yuan, identified only by the surname Yang, has been arrested and charged, with the case now proceeding through the courts. Following the closure of the China Gold Store in Beijing, it was also revealed that the Beijing store of Shandong Gold had shut down abruptly. The owner vanished, allegedly taking with him gold worth over 400 million yuan, about $56 million, deposited by customers. 
CCP officialdom shocked, corrupt official revealed as foreigner. Lu Li Xian, former deputy head of the CCP Central Inspection Team and former deputy director of the Anti Corruption Bureau, is under trial for suspected bribery. The peculiar aspect of his case is that he is a foreigner. Public records show that Lu Li Xian, now nearly 70 years old, has long been involved in anti corruption work. He has held various significant roles including deputy director positions at the Supreme People's Procuratorate's Corruption and Bribery Prosecution Office and the Anti-Corruption and Bribery Bureau, as well as director positions at the Procuratorial Technical Bureau and the Institute of Procuratorial Theory. In 2005, he became the secretary of the Discipline Inspection Committee at the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. From 2014 to 2017, he was the deputy head of the 11th Central Inspection Team of the CCP, participating in nine inspection rounds during this period. However, Lu Li Xian suddenly voluntarily surrendered in September last year and was expelled from the party in January this year. According to a report from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection and the National Supervisory Commission, Lu Li Xian committed crimes under the guise of law enforcement, used his power as a tool for personal gain, engaged in large-scale transactions of power and money, and illegally received substantial assets. The report also mentioned that Lu Li Xian had lost his ideals and beliefs, betrayed his original mission, was disloyal and dishonest to the party, and violated regulations by obtaining foreign nationality and concealing it for a long time. However, the senior supervisory official who had concealed and not reported for a long time has not disclosed which nationality he acquired or when he did so. This highly ironic scandal has spread on social media, causing netizens to chuckle. It also raises a question, who monitors the anti-corruption enforcers when they themselves are corrupt? Corruption in the Chinese communist officialdom has reached a level where almost no one is not corrupt, with varying patterns and degrees of corruption. Why are there no non-corrupt officials in the CCP? A special report published by the Epoch Times on April 2 points out that the CCP itself is the root cause of the problem. The CCP leads everything, possesses absolute power, and is unconstrained by any institutional norms or normal human moral concepts, leading to inevitable corruption. Such a system is the perfect breeding ground for corruption. Chongqing orders wedding banquets to be pre-reported criticized as a step back to the Cultural Revolution. The Chinese Communist Party's politics continuously veer left, resembling a Cultural Revolution 2.0. Recently, the Nanshan district of Chongqing mandated the pre-reporting of wedding banquets to curb excessive banquet hosting, rekindling memories of the Cultural Revolution era. On April 9, a screenshot of a notice about so-called curbing the bad practice of excessive banquet hosting went viral online, sparking dissatisfaction among Chinese netizens. The notice, issued by the Beijiao Community Neighborhood Committee of Dongqing Street, Nanchuan District, Chongqing, on April 8, requires residents to submit a written report to the Beijiao Community Neighborhood Committee 10 days in advance for wedding banquets. Funerals can be reported within five working days during or after the event. Restaurants must check and collect the banquet hosting application form and filed by the banquet organizers when taking reservations, and report to the District Market Supervision Bureau in the local township where the banquet venue is located on the day of booking. Any banquets other than for weddings or funerals are strictly prohibited. The notice also threatens that those who disregard warnings and host banquets excessively will face joint law enforcement by public security bureaus, market supervision bureaus, fire departments, and other agencies, with the consequences borne by the organizers and contractors. Besides the Beijiao community, many other communities in Nanchuan District have issued similar notices. For instance, the Sanquan Community Neighborhood Committee of Sanquan Town, Nanchuan District, issued a notice on April 7 with wording similar to that of Beijiao Community but added that only couples marrying for the first time and possessing a marriage certificate could host wedding banquets, and each meal must not exceed 40 tables. On the 9th, the Beijiao Community Neighborhood Committee confirmed the authenticity of the notice to the media. The Sanquan Community Neighborhood Committee outright stated that this was a unified action across the entire Nanchan District. 
A staff member from the Nanchuan District Government Office also admitted that the initiative was managed by the District Committee Propaganda Department. This incident has prompted many netizens to recall the Mao era of the CCP's abnormal social control. A Tencent user commented, It was like this in the 60s and 70s. People today can't imagine or understand how community officials could have the authority to enter any resident's home weekly to inspect every room for cleanliness. Other netizens commented, If someone hosts a banquet despite warnings, they will be subjected to joint law enforcement by public security market supervision offices, and fire departments. What is the legal basis for this? According to the legal principles of a normal society. For public authority, it is forbidden without explicit empowerment, for private rights, it is allowed unless expressly prohibited by law. This is overreaching. People have their own reasons for hosting banquets. The government may not support this, but at the very least, it should respect the rights of the people. This is completely unnecessary. In January this year, several places in Guizhou province also issued directives to resist excessive banquet hosting, prohibiting any banquets other than those for weddings and funerals. Radioactive leak found on China-Russia border, CCP accused of deleting posts to hide it. A recent discovery of a radiation source in Khabarovsk, a city in Russia's Far East, has led to a state of emergency. This city is located across the river from Fuyuan City in China's Heilongjiang province, causing panic among the local Chinese residents. It's rumored that the CCP is actively deleting posts on the internet to hide this incident. Zhao Lanjian, a former media professional in China, has been vocal about this issue. He claims that the CCP is trying to suppress information about the nuclear leak by deleting online posts, a tactic to appease Russia. He cites a former colleague who encountered censorship when trying to discuss this topic online, leading Zhao to search for and document residual evidence himself. Zhao Lanjian stated that residents of Shuangyashan City on the Chinese border are extremely panicked. The panic has triggered a rush to buy Geiger counters, an electronic instrument used for detecting and measuring ionizing radiation, in Heilongjiang, particularly in Shuangyashan City. Several Taobao merchants admitted that they have been selling dozens of units daily recently, with sales sometimes exceeding 100 units a day, mostly purchased by people from Heilongjiang. He said, at critical moments of life, the Chinese people no longer trust the CCP government, taking their right to life into their own hands. Additionally, Zhao highlights a significant public reaction after excessive radiation levels were reported on social media, which the CCP quickly censored. This has only intensified the local fears. He also urgently called on Heilongjiang residents not to trust the CCP government's nuclear leak information lightly and to always have a Geiger counter ready to check the surrounding nuclear radiation levels. Moreover, a report backed by a Moscow Times screenshot suggests that radiation levels were 1,600 times above normal by the end of March due to improperly handled nuclear waste. This news came to light only after a significant delay, further raising suspicions about the handling of the incident. The city of Khabarovsk in Russia's Far East, located just 65 kilometers from Fuyuan City in China's Heilongjiang province, recently detected a radiation source near a transmission tower, prompting local authorities to declare an emergency state. This proximity has caused concern among Heilongjiang residents about the potential for cross-border radiation effects. Despite these concerns, Russian reports and subsequent monitoring by China's National Nuclear Safety Administration have shown no abnormal radiation levels. However, the contradictory nature of declaring an emergency while reporting no adverse effects has led to skepticism. Critics argue that if there were truly no threat, declaring an emergency would be unnecessary, prompting calls for cautious interpretation of official statements. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.